In this video, I'm going to discuss different forms of acute renal failure, which includes the pre-renal, intrinsic, and post-renal forms, discuss their causes, and then how they affect different lab values, such as the fraction of the excreted sodium that is calculated by measuring the urinary sodium divided by the serum sodium divided by urinary creatine divided by serum creatine. Discuss how they affect the urine osmolarity and then finally discuss the BUN to creatine ratio how is affected in any one of these disorders. So in order to understand how these disorders are affecting these lab values, first I would like to go over the measurements of BUN and creatine as indicator of glomerular filtration rate, which is the amount of the fluid that is being filtered in the kidneys. So inulin is the best agent for measuring the GFR in that it's being freely filtered but it's neither being reabsorbed nor secreted. So the amount of inulin that is being filtered by the kidney will be equal to the amount of inulin that is being excreted by the kidneys because none of it is being neither reabsorbed nor secreted inside the renal tubules. So therefore the GFR times plasma concentration of inulin is equal to urinary inulin times the volume of the urine. Now if you revise this equation that I've shown you here, it gives you the GFR equals to urinary concentration of inulin times the volume of the urine divided by the plasma concentration of the inulin. So while this technique is being very accurate for the measurement of GFR, it's inconvenient in that you will have to provide IV infusion of inulin and then later on check the GFR and not every lab or hospital may be equipped with this technique. So instead you can use the creatinine and blood urea nitrogen which are normally present in the blood as an indicator of GFR. So creatinine is a breakdown product of the creatine that is found in the muscles and this product is being freely filtered and also secreted in the renal tubules. It's not being reabsorbed but are being secreted. Therefore, the amount of creatine that is being excreted in the urine will be about 20% higher than the GFR. But then with the techniques that are being used to measure creatinine, there is some errors in the measurement of the creatinine which will cancel out the amount that is being secreted. And thus usually creatinine is giving an accurate estimation of the GFR. And then BUN is another tool that can be used for the estimation of GFR. This one is also being freely filtered and also being reabsorbed. So creatinine was being secreted while BUN is being reabsorbed. And then there are conditions that can cause elevated BUN such as dehydration or post-renal failure since both of these conditions increase the reabsorption of the BUN. And then other conditions that can again rise the BUN include for instance the high protein diet as well as GI bleeding. So next, I would like to go over different forms of acute renal failures, starting with pre-renal failure, which is from either low blood pressure or from low renal perfusion. And conditions that can cause pre-renal failure, for instance, include hypovolemia from dehydration, blood loss, vomiting, or excess diuresis use. Other conditions like that congestive heart failure can cause decreased perfusion of the kidneys, renal, Artery stenosis is another common cause of decreased perfusion in these patients and then peripheral vasodilation from either taking too much antihypertensive medications or from the sepsis can again cause decreased renal perfusion and pre-renal failure. So these patients present with oliguria but have a normal kidney function and thus since they have a normal kidney function, the kidney tries to compensate for low perfusion by increasing the sodium reabsorption as well as water reabsorption as well as BUN reabsorption. So therefore the amount of sodium that is being excreted in these patients would be less than 1% and then the urine sodium is also less than 20. Since water is being reabsorbed, the osmolarity of the urine rises above 500 and then BUN is being reabsorbed while creatine cannot be reabsorbed. So BUN to creatine ratio, since only BUN is the one that is being reabsorbed, will be more than 20 to 1 in patients with pre-renal failure. 
The next condition is intrinsic renal failure, which is due to the damage to renal tissues, as a consequence of which these patients cannot concentrate urine any longer. And conditions that can cause intrinsic renal failure, for instance, include glomerulonephritis. The next cause of intrinsic renal failure is acute tubular necrosis, which is from the ischemia, and due to the shedding of the renal epithelium, these patients present with the granular muddy brown casts. And the common causes of acute tubular necrosis includes medications like for instance cisplatin or aminoglycosides, radiographic contrast dyes, as well as myoglobin urea. And then the third condition that can cause intrinsic renal failure is interstitial disease of the uh, kidneys, which is an allergic reaction that causes inflammation of the tissues that are surrounding the glomeruli. And these patients present with fever, rash, as well as eosinophilia, and increased number of eosinophils in the urine. Now, because of the decreased renal function in these patients, BUN can no longer be absorbed, so therefore the BUN to creatine ratio would be less than 20. Sodium cannot be absorbed, so therefore the urinary sodium would be more than 40, and the fraction of the excreted or of sodium is also more than 2%. And since water is not being reabsorbed, therefore the osmolarity of the urine will also be less than 350. So since the intrinsic renal failure was associated with the formation of different forms of casts, I would like to go over them and review them with you here. So white blood cell casts are seen with the patients that have pyelonephritis, which is the infection of the kidneys, while patients that have infections of the bladder or cystitis do not present with the white blood cell cast. So white blood cell casts are specific to pyelonephritis. Next, we have red blood cell casts, which are seen in nephritic syndrome. And these patients secrete less than 3.5 gram of protein per day. Fatty casts are seen in patients with nephrotic syndrome, which secrete more than 3.5 gram of protein per day. So since these patients lose a lot of proteins, then the liver it starts to increase the amount of the lipoproteins that is being secreted. And since lipoproteins increase, the levels of lipid in these patients also increase, and thus they present with the fatty casts. Granular muddy brown casts, which I just discussed with you, is seen with acute tubular necrosis. Waxy casts are seen with chronic renal failure. And then finally, hyaline casts are seen with exercise or dehydration. So in any case, we've discussed the pre-renal and intrinsic renal failure. The last condition is post-renal failure, which is from the obstruction of the urine flow. And these conditions include, for instance, the kidney stones or benign prostatic hyperplasia, as well as tumors that can block the urine flow. And since the fluids keep on backing up in the kidneys, it can cause renal damage, and thus the lab presentations in these patients is the same as intrinsic renal failure, with the exception of the BUN to creatine ratio, which is more than 15. And the reason for that is that since there is decreased flow of the fluids inside the kidneys, and there is increased pressure, therefore there would be an increased reabsorption of BUN, and so BUN to creatine would be more than 15 in these patients. All right, now that we've discussed all these conditions, now we can go over the table and fill this out. So pre-renal disease is seen with the hypotension, with dehydration, with congestive heart failure, or any conditions that can cause the renal artery stenosis or decrease the blood volume, like for instance, excess diuresis or vomiting. And so since the function of the kidneys in these patients is normal, the kidney will increase the absorption of the BUN, water, as well as the sodium. And thus the fraction of the excreted sodium in the urine would be less than 1%. Urine osmolarity will increase to more than 500, and then BUN, since it's being reabsorbed, BUN to creatine ratio would be more than 20. Next, we have the intrinsic renal failure, which is seen, for instance, with acute tubular necrosis or interstitial nephritis, 
which is caused by different drugs like NSAIDs. And so since there is a damage to the kidneys in these patients, therefore there would be a decreased absorption of the sodium. So the amount of sodium that is being excreted is more than 2%. Urine osmolarity would be less than 350 because the kidneys are damaged and can no longer absorb water. And then the BUN cannot be absorbed either. So therefore it would be less than 15. And then finally, we have the post renal failure where the conditions that block their urine flow, such as kidney stones, benign prostatic hyperplasia or cancer. So all these values would be the same in these patients, more than 2% of the uh, excreted sodium as well as less than 350. And the reason for that is that the backup of the urine inside the kidneys will cause the renal damage. So their presentations would be similar to intrinsic. The only exception is the BUN to creatine ratio, which would be more than 15 in these patients. So since the fluid is backing up, there is decreased flow rate of the urine and then there is also increased pressure which enhances the reabsorptions of BUN and thus BUN to creatine would be more than 15 compared to intrinsic renal failure which is less than 15 and that concludes our discussion.